What's happening guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So today we're going to take a look at the December 6th episode of Impact. Another solid show as we build toward Homecoming. Some things I didn't like, some things I liked. You know, it's pretty pretty standard for shows nowadays. I feel like there were some questionable booking decisions on this show. Um, kind of matches just thrown together, at least one. But I guess it did have a point at the end of the show. So we open the show with an X Ultimate X qualifying match. This was Jay Chris versus Willie Mack. Um, OVE is obviously present at ringside. So this made this match a little more even since uh, when you look at Jay Chris and Willie Mack, they are both two very different sized men. Um, obviously, Willie controlled a good portion of the match. Sammy Callahan gets involved. Therefore, we even the playing field. Uh, Callis did make mention that Jake is much better than just Sammy's lackey, which, you know, that is what most people have thought about him. Uh, I did not expect him to go over here, but he actually did. At one point, uh, Willie Mack hit a sunset powerbomb where Jake looked like he landed on his head. Did not look lo very pretty. Uh, Mack was going for the coast-to-coast -to, -coast to finish the match out. Dave gets up on the apron, distracts the referee. Sammy gets up, distracts Willie. Jake takes advantage. He hits a top rope cutter, and he's moving on to Ultimate X at homecoming. Um, definitely thought Jake getting the victory was the right decision here. Um, Jake is a very talented wrestler, and we've seen Sammy make mention of it, that he is one of the best wrestlers that he knows, if not the best. Um, at this point, I was pretty excited i said you know what maybe they're going back to you know the roots for the x division championship almost being its own division um not really like a mid-card title what they used it for with cage which i wasn't a huge fan of i really think it is time for impact to bring in some sort of sort of mid-card title whether it be a tv title or hell they could bring back the grand championship without the rules and just use it to help elevate guys from here to here i mean the X Division Championship is really not meant for that, at least in my own opinion. Um, but, you know, I mean, you have guys like Willie Mack, and you don't know if they're going to be world champion, but at least if you have that mid-card title, and you can have pretty much most singles guys hold it in the company or something like that, that are technically outside of the X Division. But just a thought I have, let me know what you guys think. If you want to see another title in the company, help you know, give some matches meaning because we do see a lot of matches that are just thrown together for no reason, at least with another title. You would have another reason for it. Um, then we had Tessa and Moose. They cut a promo, hyping their match with Johnny and Taya later on tonight. Still not really sure why this match took place. I mean, if something was set up for this to happen last week, it would be fine. But, uh, you know, otherwise it's, it's kind of just happening. Um, I guess... Tessin Cage versus Johnny and Tyre really wouldn't have made sense, so I get it in that aspect. But, I mean, as far as the promo was concerned, Moose was fantastic as usual. Um, he was hilarious during the match as well when I get to that. Um, and then we have the, quote-unquote, I guess the debut of Dark Alley. She was accompanied by Sue Young, and she faced Heather Monroe. Um, was not... Did not feel like your typical alley match. The crowd was not really into it. I think they were uh, unsure how to react to Dark Alley because, you know, they like Alley, but they don't like her current character in that, um, I guess, way. Um, we even did get a Heather chant, so that, that was something different. But uh, this seemed to be a much more competitive match than I had expected. But I, I guess the whole reason behind that was because we did get more character development on Alley as the match progressed. Um, she ends up going over with a code breaker. Then after the match, she uses the mandible claw. Kiara Hogan comes out. She attacks Sue and attempts to snap Allie out of it. Allie attacks her, hits her with a code breaker. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a match between Allie and Kiara Hogan at homecoming. It would make sense. I mean, this is your perfect way to bring Rosemary back. If she is cleared to wrestle, I know she was rehabbing somewhat recently, so I think if that's the route they're going to go, um, I think that would be huge. I definitely see more people being interested in stuff with Rosemary. I think she had one of the biggest followings in Impact, so I think with her back, that will definitely help. Um, I mean, a lot of things in the show's... Over even the whole tapings, nothing, especially with Impact looking for a new television home, you would think they would kind of 
be trying to nail every angle, every segment, just trying to make it must-see TV. Just kind of seems like they're, I don't want to say phoning it in, but it just seems like everything's safe and standard. Um, I mean, they do have a media company they hired a couple months ago, well, hopefully helping them find a new TV home. I really think what they should have done is when they had buzz and everything like that, they knew their contract was running out with pop, but I'm guessing because moving to the 10 PM time slot really threw everything, um, for a loop. So maybe, maybe it wasn't even a thought back then. So it's really tough to say. I only see uh, Willie Mac and Rich Swan backstage. Mac is obviously pissed about his match with Jay Chris losing and getting attacked by OVE. Swan says he knows Callahan for a while, and it's not worth it because, well, Sammy's a crazy son of a bitch. So next week, in another qualifying match, it's Rich Swan versus Dave Chris. Willie says he will have his back. Good segment. Made sense. Uh, we will see things continue, I'm sure, with Willie Mac and OVE next week. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing Willie Mac for Sammy Callahan feud. I think uh, they could put on some interesting stuff. Uh, I definitely think... Willie needs some sort of feud. Otherwise, he's kind of just been uh, hanging around since Bound for Glory, I guess, when he made his debut. Not much has happened in, what, two months? He had a couple tag matches and the singles match with Rich Swan, but he wasn't really involved in much. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, we haven't seen anything with Sammy Callahan since his match at, with Cage, what, almost a month ago. Um, so I think this would be good for both men. I mean... I don't know how you book it because both men could probably use the win. But if it happens, it happens. So we'll uh, get to that then. Then we have the Desi Hit Squad versus Damian Hyde and Manny Lemons. Yeah, nothing more than a squash match. It's fine. Desi Hit Squad can use as much momentum as they can get. But unfortunately, I, I don't see much happening with them, especially with LAX and the Lucha Brothers owning the tag division, basically. But you know, the I don't I don't I really don't know with the Desi Hit Squad. It seems like they go with it and then pull back. Gas down, pull back. It just doesn't seem like they're really sure what to do with these guys. I don't even know if we're gonna see your Cinder back. Um I do I have enjoyed Rohit in all the segments we had with him, especially backstage interacting with Gamma and even with the whole uh Thanksgiving episode. So I would like to see them do a little more with him. Him at least, but we don't really know much about Raj other than he is uh, Gama Singh's son. So, again, it's just, I don't know, the lower part of the tag team division they seem to be having a hard time handling, especially with KM and Falaba. Guys have a book that just came out. It's sold out on Amazon, not even on the show tonight. You would think Impact would want, I mean, obviously, I don't know if they knew that they were doing the book, Impact, that is, when they did the show, but... You would think that they would try to capitalize on that or something. I mean, KM and Fall About always get great reactions. They're fan favorites, and then they end up losing most of the time. So, I don't know. Play the hot hand, Impact. I was really hoping to see them get a tag title run at some point. I mean, it could happen in the future, but it seems like for now it's going to be Lucha Brothers and LAX doing everything in the tag division. Then we have Ethan Page and Matt Seidel backstage. Matt was giving Ethan a pep talk. Um... And we have Mackenzie interviewing Katarina about her loss last week. Apparently, this is still going on. She says that last time someone crossed her, she made them disappear, obviously referencing Joe Hendry and Grado, um, which I know people were wondering about them. The rumors that I had heard was that there was some sort of visa issue, I guess, with Joe Hendry. So he has not been seen in the New York tapings or the Vegas tapings. Last time we saw him was... The Mexico tapings, which all this took place, so maybe we'll see him back next time they leave the country. I don't know. Um, but she says that Jordan is going to suffer the same fate. She introduces her friend, Ruby Rays, who is apparently, or who Katarina says is going to be Jordan's worst nightmare. I'm not sure much. I, I, know, I should say I don't know much about her, but I do like that we are getting three separate knockout storylines. Tough to give each one their own time, though, in a two-hour show on the you know weekly television. But good job for Impact for uh, running three separate storylines. But and this had a reason for it to continue. Then, if we're going to bring in somebody new and have them basically do Katarina's dirty work. Um, but yeah, if you guys know anything about Ruby Race, I'd really 
be interested to do some research on her if you guys got any matches. Um, but yeah, and then we had the uh, GWN, Chris Sabin, cashing in option C. Oh, interesting drink. Coconut, oh, coconut, cucumber vodka somebody gave me at work. So I uh, tried to mix it with some Sprite, give it a little something. It's not bad, just different. Um, then we had Mackenzie. She is outside Impact Management's office. Eli Drake comes out. He has his note from last week, and it reads, well, he had a little interaction with Mackenzie. It was pretty funny. Uh, Mackenzie reads it and says, Eli, you are cordially invited to homecoming. Here are two tickets to the Monsters Ball. Abyss. Eli says that Abyss is going to see, suffer the same fate as Joseph Park at homecoming. Um, you know, sometimes I really don't like being right. I kind of, I was talking with Roe from the Impact Lounge about this a while back, and I kind of said, you know what? These two are going to have a match at homecoming. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of them utilizing Eli in this manner. Um, I don't know if this is really going to do much for him. Man, he really needs to be in that main event picture, or at least up in near that main event picture. Uh, but, I mean, I guess it does make sense for this to be the way that they blow off the feud between the two of them. At least he's not facing someone like James Ellsworth. I, I guess that's that's good. Abyss is a Hall of Famer. He does have some credibility to his name. Eli getting a victory over him, I, get, I guess, would help him and elevate him. So, I don't know. I'm on the fence about this, but hopefully it's good. Um, then we have another Rascal segment. Scarlet interrupts. Desmond says, when do we get a fourth rascal? And uh, Trey takes off his shirt, and he's getting all uh, ready for Scarlett. And Scarlett says that she was impressed with their match last week. She obviously tells them about her talent search. That was it. I'm still wondering where the talent search is going, when we are getting a payoff, and if there is even going to be a payoff. It's really interesting. Um, again, it was something that they seem to be going really forward with and then pulling back, and I don't know if they actually – know where this is going do we have somebody in mind um maybe homecoming will figure it out but we'll see up next we had the second qualifying match for ultimate x matt seidel versus ethan page teacher versus student um yeah the beginning of the match i actually really enjoyed this match i am not a huge fan of the outcome but two were in a stalemate for the beginning of the match that quickly changed we had a Decent amount of back and forth. Uh, Seidel kept a pretty slow pace working on Ethan Page's leg. And he did sell it throughout the match, so good job there. Uh, we did see a nice spot with Seidel going for a moonsault out of the corner. Page catches him and turns it into a backbreaker. Like I said, good spot. Uh, Page hit an interesting-looking cutter on Seidel on the apron. Page hits a swanton bomb. The two roll each other up, and Page ends up rolling up Seidel for the win. Uh, a little shocked about this one. I mean, I figured it made the most sense for Matt Seidel to be a part of Ultimate X. Fits the mold, but... Um, I mean, I guess they could have just saved this match for later on. I mean, I feel like th they seem to be okay after the match. There was no real uh, dissension between the two, but I feel like eventually it is going to lead to that just because of the simple fact that Seidel is probably going to be annoyed that he got one over on the, the student beat the teacher. I figured this was going to be something where Seidel beats um, Paige a handful of times. Paige gets frustrated. He ends up winning or something like that, building up to something. I don't know if this is going to go anywhere. I mean, I, I would like to see Seidel in the main event picture. I've said this before a while back, which a lot of people laughed at me and didn't think Matt Seidel would be a part of the main event but I really think he puts on quality matches. He's entertaining. I mean, I think he's got what it takes to be up there, so I would like to see that. I mean, hell, he's put on a great match with Brian Cage, who's probably at some point in the future going to be a world champion. Um, so what do you guys think? you guys think Matt Seidel will eventually be a world champion, or do you think he's just going to be stuck in like the uh, X Division mid-card range for the rest of his impact tenure let me know um then we head back to the loony bin eddie edwards is playing chess with his new friend raven uh eddie freaks out and says he doesn't belong here raven being the sarcastic person that he is he's like it's nice here i check myself in once a month uh, eddie finally realizes he takes things too far raven tells him he doesn't take things far enough he you know 
we saw all these comparisons from when Eddie Edwards and Sammy Callahan were having their whole thing uh, to Tommy Dreamer and Raven. So having Raven a part of this segment, I thought really added value to it. I, I really enjoyed Raven. He was probably one of my favorite wrestlers from WCW. And even when he went to TNA with the gathering and things like that, uh, Raven ends up swiping a key card from one of the uh, doctors there, hands it to Eddie. Eddie can use it for his escape. Eddie says he owes him one, and Raven says, yeah, you do. So as long as Raven does not get back in the ring, I am okay with this. I don't want to see Raven and Tommy Dreamer in 2018 taking up spots of uh, two young guys. I mean, hell, it was, uh, in my opinion... Tommy Dreamer, Eli Drake, main eventing a show in 2018. Not not, not my greatest, uh, or not what I was hoping would happen. Hell, Tommy Dreamer fought Brian Pillman Jr. on MLW last week as well. So very strange, but if you're going to bring in the old guys, keep them in an outside role. I don't need to see them wrestling. That That's all I really have to say about this. Again, like I said, Raven's one of my favorite wrestlers growing up, so seeing him here was great. Uh, we have a backstage interaction between LAX and the Lucha Brothers. Conan wants to make sure that everybody's on the sh- same page and there isn't going to be any shenanigans in their match. Penta does the zero fear thing to Santana. Things start getting heated. Conan is getting pissed at this point. Um, so, yeah, I guess they're just trying to add a little heat to the match. I mean, otherwise, it's just a dream match. And, I mean... For most of the time, it doesn't live up to the hype. I feel like this match is going to be great regardless. Uh, we did get an announcement that it's going to be Santana versus Phoenix next week. I'm I'm fine with that. It probably should have been Santana versus Pentagon since Pentagon was the one that got in his face. That makes more sense, but um, I feel like the big factor, honestly, when it goes down at homecoming is probably going to be Conan. He's probably going to have to choose between sides, but... We will see. Um, and then we had Johnny and Taya being interviewed by Mackenzie. Johnny says he is going to take Moose to Slamtown. And Ty- Taya says she is going to give Tessa a taste of what is going to happen at homecoming. And Johnny said it's a big night because it's the first time they've teamed together. And I'm pretty sure he was just talking about in Impact because I've actually seen them tag together against Joey Ryan and Kansas LeRae a while back. So that was that. And then we had the main event. Johnny and Taya versus Moose and Tessa. Moose is a funny guy. I really like what they're doing with him. When they turned him heel, he's just kind of this prick. And like I said, he's just hilarious. In the beginning of the match, he tries to kiss Tessa. I guess Johnny went and kissed Taya in the other corner. Moose goes to try to kiss Tessa. Tessa's like, the hell are you doing? At this point, Johnny goes and rolls him up. Almost gets a three count. Callis at this point says, Moose is such a talented athlete. But he's a douche. Like I said, funny stuff. Um, we did see a nice spot with Moose going for the go to hell. Johnny reverses it into a Hurricane Rana. Uh, Taya looks like she's going to win. Moose pulls the ref out. Johnny takes out Moose. Taya left alone with Tessa in the ring. She puts her in that same submission she lo- used, I believe, last week. That bow and arrow type move. And Tessa taps out in the middle of the ring. So that was a little bit of a shock. Um... I think it probably would have been better had the men finished this match just because the women are actually going to have a match together at the pay-per-view. Um, the two, besides crossing paths again, that's really all between the two of them. Um, after the match, obviously, the heels need to stand strong. Moose hits a spear on Johnny. Tessa attacks Taya. Tessa grabs a chair. She's about ready to hit Taya with it. Killer Cross comes out. He grabs the chair from Tessa. Cage then comes out. He knocks Moose out of the ring. Hits a German on Cross, which Cross just stands right up. Crowd's really getting into it at this point, you know, between the standoff between Cross and and Cage. Cross just like, you know what, screw this, I'm leaving. Gets out of the ring. Cage helps tie up. And we get a stare down between Cage and uh, Johnny to close the show. So, it, I mean, it was... The match was good, it was enjoyable, but uh, still weird that they just threw it together. Um, If this was somebody's first time tuning in, this was a lot going on since you had multiple crossing over feuds and stuff like that. No really 
didn't tell you anything about Cross and Johnny's relationship in the past or Cross and uh, Taya's, but it seemed like they had just a lot going on here. Um, but seeing Cage versus Cross together, I think that's something we're definitely going to see in the future. And we could have probably had that at homecoming had Johnny dropped the title, but definitely wasn't time for that. Um, I think Johnny makes a good champion for the company, so there's a good possibility he retains at homecoming. Um, I still think Taya has a good chance of picking up that knockouts championship. She's been getting great crowd reactions. It seemed like they're doing a lot with her character. She's got her new music video and new entrance music. Um, so, yeah. But, I mean, uh, I'm not sure if how many more weeks we actually have until homecoming. Usually they take that two-week break at the end of the year. So, I'm not really sure. I haven't heard anything on it. Nothing about them moving to a new network. There's That's still up in the air. I did hear rumors that Pop said they would keep impact on until they found a new network so if that's true we will see um but yeah that's pretty much all i have for you guys today let me know what you thought of my review let me know what you thought of the show um yeah that's that's it i'll probably be back sunday for my viewership report um maybe tomorrow i still work i'm still working on that uh two million subscriber video just showcasing how much impact has really grown on youtube in the past year but uh, yeah, thanks for checking out my video. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.